Hi and welcome again to my channel. I am Ebola Dwali, your baby's doctor. And it is always a pleasure to bring you reliable information about your child's health and well-being. Every, every topic discussed on this channel are well-researched topics with reliable information that you can trust. So thank you so much for joining us. If you're just joining us for the very, very first time, thank you so much for coming. Yay! It's very nice to have you here. If you have not subscribed to my channel, Please do so, subscribe to my channel, just click the subscribe button, it's right below this video, just click that button and you're done, it is that easy. You can also click the notification bell so that you can get notified every time I post a new video, that way you don't get to miss out on anything. So today we'll be talking about diaper rash, like that's every mother's nightmare. It is very common, very common in babies and can be very difficult to treat. So today I'll be talking about diaper rash, how to treat it, and most importantly, how to prevent diaper rash. Because this is another case of prevention better than cure. So that is what we'll be talking about today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be with you shortly and then we'll get to the topic. Of so what are diaper rashes or nappy rashes? They are those things, reddish bumps that you see around the diaper area of your baby so around your boot around the baby's buttocks the perineum and the thighs these are actually very very common and it is due to irritation of the baby's skin you know a newborn skin or a baby skin or a younger child's skin is actually very mild and tender so any form of irritation can cause um, diaper rash and the most common cause of irritation in this case is urine because urine has ammonia in it and this can actually cause irritation of the skin, not only when in children, but even in adults. But you know, when a, um, when a child has diaper in place and pees, and then this, you, this diaper is not changed on time, this can actually cause irritation of the diaper region. So yes, when you put a diaper in place for a long period of time without changing it, it can cause diaper rash. Another thing is friction, because some of these diapers uh, may have some lines and creases in them, they, when, they, when the body has contact with those lines and creases, it can actually cause diaper rash in your children. Other things are chemicals in diaper, chemicals in soap, chemicals in detergents and bubble baths. When, you have, when this is already on the baby's skin and then you apply a diaper to it, this can actually also lead to diaper rash in your children. Some children have allergic reactions to some things in the diaper or even to, you know, they just have allergic reaction to anything in this world. So such children can also have um, diaper rash. Another cause of diaper rash is an infection. And the most common cause of infection that causes diaper rash is candida. Okay, so yes, this can also be a cause of diaper rash. But the most common cause of diaper rash is still having a diaper on your baby's buttocks for so long. So I've already told you how to recognize diaper rash. I said it's usually reddish, spreads, could be bumpy, could be flat, and then sometimes it could be painful, it could be itchy. Okay, so you see it around the buttocks, you see it around the perineum. Occasionally it will spread to the abdomen, it will spread to the thighs. But usually not around the folds. Why? Because urine will not usually get there. But anywhere urine gets to, or the diaper gets to, the rash can spread to such a place. And I've said it that the main, the most common cause of this rash is having a diaper, a diaper on your baby for too long. Okay, so that is how to recognize it. That is what it looks like. Occasionally, you can have blisters, you can have ulcers, you can have some, you know, bleeding. When you have this, it is time for you to go to the hospital. But when it's just the reddish thing, then you can actually manage it at home. So how do you manage diaper rash at home? It is very close to preventing the upper rash. <laughs> you know, the prevention and the treatment are almost the same thing. So it's actually better for you to start preventing it before it starts. So what are the things you do when your child has the upper rash? Number one, reduce the upper time. I, I, I know that this is a bit hard, you know, because a child, a baby would never tell you when they want to pee or poo. So when you don't wear the upper for them, it gives you more work to do in cleaning up your child. But if you have a child that is actually prone to um, the upper rash, you might need to restrict the amount of time in a day that you wear the upper for your babies. So that they can have enough air to blow that area. <laughs> you get, they need enough air actually to blow that area. 
So when you're at home, you can put a marking touch on the bed, on the chair, and put your baby there wearing just normal cotton pants so that fresh air can blow to that region. Of course, when you're going out, of course, you have to like wear the pants for your baby so that people will, not run, people will not run away from your baby. But when you're at home, you can just put a marking touch. You know that marking touch is like that leathery thing that does not allow water to pass through. So if your baby pulls or pees, it's easy for you to just clean the marking touch and cleaning the bed and all that. So that's a way to actually prevent and treat. In fact, when you're treating a child that has diaper rash, you have to restrict the amount of diaper and uh, the amount of diaper time in a day. You have to also change the diaper frequently. I know diapers can be like they can be very expensive. <laughs> it's like spending a lot of money on waste products. But uh, well, with the era of diapers now and less of cloth nappies, you get to spend a lot on diaper. But you have to. You just have to change the diaper very often. The moment your child pees or poos in the diaper, you have to change it because you can't wait until you accumulate a lot of pee. This way you'll be doing more harm to your baby uh, than good. You'll be doing some good to your pocket, but a lot of harm to your baby. And I think we, we, we really don't want that. So please, you have to change the diaper very frequently. Even if your baby does not pee in the diaper after a period of time, please change uh, that diaper. Yes, you have to use protective um, creams. So these creams will serve as a barrier to reduce the friction between your baby's skin and the diaper. For example, very cheap Vaseline, you can use that. For some people, you can use zinc oxide creams, such as pseudo cream and all those. You can also use um, castor oil. This is also very good. So you just put it on your baby's buttocks, around the perineum, all the places that the diaper will touch, so that it protects the skin of your baby from friction. If you're using cloth nappies, you have to wash them regularly with baby-friendly detergents and soaps. So please avoid soaps that are, that are filled with a lot of chemicals and are not mild and are not baby-friendly. Because this would usually stay on the diaper and then when you attach it to your baby's body, it will irritate your baby's skin and then you start having issues with diaper rash. Even after washing the diaper, you have to rinse it very, very well for those that are using um, nappy clothing. Please avoid using talcum. So any talc powder, avoid it on your baby's skin, whether on the buttocks, whether on the face, anywhere. Please avoid talc containing uh, powders. Avoid um, wipes, diapers, soap that have fragrance or that have alcohol. Okay, so this, actually, this should be avoided in your children. This would, or because these things can actually also irritate the skin and predispose the child to diaper rash. Very, very, very important is nutrition. So for your babies, they have been exclusively breastfed, beautiful. If they are older babies and are now on complementary feeds, you have to make sure that the feeds are balanced. Protein, carbon dioxide, fats, and all those have to be, vitamins and all those have to be present in your baby's daily meals. Because when the baby is malnourished, they are also predisposed to diaper rash. Now for you to know when to see the doctor. You have to see the doctor if you have treated this diaper rash for a period of two weeks and you're not seeing any difference, then you would need to see the doctor. Doctor might need to add some other uh, medications such as steroids and all that to treat the diaper rash. Also, if a child has fever, if the rash is very painful, if the rash is, uh, it has blisters, it has ulcers that started bleeding, it looks very funny, or you're not just comfortable, then you need to see your doctor. Because it might mean that your child actually has a fungal infection that we call candida that can also lead to diaper rash. So I've said a lot about diaper rash today. And the take-home point, the most important take-home point is that diaper rash is caused by irritation of the skin. And the most common cause of that irritation is you leaving your baby's diaper in for so long. So... In order for you to save that money that you want to save by leaving that diaper in for so long, you have to spend that money on that diaper. So that when you spend the money on the diaper and then you change it often, the child will not have diaper rash and then you don't have to spend money on diaper rash. Do you get my point? So bottom line, you have to change the diaper as frequent as necessary. And of course, like I said, if you still try, to, if you are trying to save money, which I think a lot of us try to do, when you're at home, don't use diaper for your baby. Or when you're just the two of you or the three of you in the house, no visitors, you can just have your baby. Their skin, 
be able to get some fresh air to that area. Everybody likes fresh air around <laughs> around that area. So babies also like fresh air around that area. So that is it today about diaper rash. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to drop them in the description box below and then we'll talk about those things. If you have anything you want me to talk about that I've not talked about on my channel, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. You can also connect me on social media at your baby's doctor. That's Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm also okay twitter i'm also i'm also a regular on tiktok i don't know i'll try <laughs> all right so you can connect to me on social media you can send me a mail if you have something to discuss as your baby's doctor you can sponsor this um program i'm always open to things like that thank you so much for joining me remember to subscribe like click the notification bell and share so that this information can reach out to everybody that needs thank you so much for joining me I mean your baby's doctor, shining lights on your child's health and well-being. See you next time and have, have a lovely day. Bye.